When you have it, say amen. Genesis chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 28. When you have it, say amen. Let, let, let's read it together since I read it for us last week. Here he begins the reading of God's holy word. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God blessed them and gave them a fivefold responsibility. Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish, subdue, and have dominion. We talked about that last week. I'm not going to get back into it, but I wanted to use that again as a launching point as we speak from the subject, walking in the blessing of God. Father, bless this word and charge it with your power. Bless your people that they will not only hear the word, but that they shall receive the word. And the word should be activated in their life that they will do the word so that, God, you can do for them what they cannot do for themselves. Bless them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So we talked last week from Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, that God says, when you're blessed... It is expressed in, in, in these five ways. Not limited to, but in this text, you are to be fruitful. Somebody say fruitful. Secondarily, you are to multiply. Say multiply. Please understand, fruitful and multiply has to do with increase. Part of the blessing of God on your life is increase. Somebody say increase. Then you are to replenish. Because if you are active in anything, whatever you have depletes. And so it must be replenished. Somebody say replenish. And after you replenish, you are, there are some things in your life you have to subdue, bring under control. Somebody say subdue. And finally, have dominion. Rule. Rule. Now, let me just say this again, because we live in a time where when you, people hear rule or have dominion, they think of abuse. You can rule without being abusive. See how weak that amen was? Because so many of us have been abused that the thought of, of ruling or having to obey or having to, to bring yourself under, it, 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 it rubs against the grain in us. And nobody wants to say, I, I want to have, somebody should have rule over me. Are, are you with me? That's still weak, still weak. Okay, you know, Because you've been hurt. I understand that. You've been abused by people, by authority. Some women have been abused by men. Some men have been abused by women. Some children have been abused by their parents. Some parents have been abused by their children. It's, it's because of sin, it has affected us. But please understand, if you have no one that has authority over you, you are an Ishmael. Ishmael means you're a wild ass. That's what the Bible says. Because everybody needs somebody to be over them in authority to help straighten you out and keep you on the road. You know you are crazy. You know you. you know, look, look at the person next to you and just tell them, I know, I know, I know about you. I know about you. I know about you. Oh, I know you got it together sometimes. And for the most time, you know, we, but, 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 but all of us, all of us got our crazy moments. Have, have you ever had a time in your life where somebody who you respected was able to stop you and bring you in and say, hey, 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 it, it's not all that. Come bring it here. If you don't have someone in your life that can stop you with a word, you're in a dangerous place. If you don't have someone in your life who don't have to argue with you, who don't have to give you 15 scriptures, who don't have to, to give you sight precedent, and his, no, no, no. If you don't have someone in your life who has already showed you they cared for you, showed you they loved you, have been there for you, who can say to you, I know you think you're right, but you're wrong. If you don't have that, you're in trouble. And you're destined to mess up your life. Because everybody needs somebody in their life that can stop them with just a word. Somebody say amen. Jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 28. That's where we ended last, last week. It was wonderful. Deuteronomy chapter 28. 
and we are going to verse 3. And I'm going to try what I failed to do miserably last week, which is just to read, <laughs> read through it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning at verse 3. This is, this is God speaking. This is Moses speaking to them about the blessing of God. He says, verse 3, blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall, thou, shall be thy basket and thy store. Now, that's where we ended last week. What a time we had last week. But again, I want you to, to, to look at this with me. Matter of fact, I want you to read it with me because I want your ear to hear your mouth say what the word of God says. Go to verse 3. And we're going to read it together. We're going to read it slowly. We're not going to rush through it. We're going to eat it, read it nice and slow so that your ear and your spirit can hear what God is saying to you. With me. Let's, let's read now. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Go on. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Read the next one. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Stop. Do you get the idea that God wants you to be blessed? I had you read that because I want you to see I'm not making it up and I'm not taking it out of context. There's a reason. This this sermon is part of the series I'm doing on why. Why? We're going to be talking about why we do things in church and why this and why that. Because I want you to understand we are not crazy. We, We are not crazy. We are simply spiritual in a world that is not spiritual. We, we, we simply have antenna that can touch frequencies that the non-believer can't touch. And so when you understand what it is God has intended for us, you can understand why we do what we do. Why do we walk around talking about I'm blessed? Why do we walk around saying I'm blessed and highly favored? I'm too blessed to be stressed because the word tells us that in spite of where we are today, In spite of what you're dealing with this morning, God wants you to live a life in a blessed zone. But but I want you to see that that God wants you to be blessed. Do me a favor. Take your finger, point your own chest and say, God wants to bless me. Say it again. Say, God wants me to be blessed. Say, I want to be blessed. If you really want to be blessed, say, I want to be blessed. Because I would rather be blessed than cursed. I would rather be blessed than not blessed. I'd rather be blessed than average. And since, look, hold up. He says, he says, look, look for verse 3. You're going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, wherever you go. Your fruit of your body shall be blessed. The fruit of your ground shall be blessed. Your cattle, the increase of your kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. So please, please understand, when it says kind, there, the word they carry in, it means your, 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 your livestock, your livestock, your cattle, your, your, what, whatever you have. Remember, these people were farmers and, and shepherds, and, and, and they had cattle. That's what they did. None of them worked for Apple. Okay? None, none, none of them were, were entertainers and athletes. So, so God says, everything that, that, that has to do with you, I want you to understand. I want you to do it, but I want you to be blessed when you do it. So I know you don't have no cattle. None of y'all raised, got up this morning at 5 o'clock in the morning and went out and feed, feed the pigs and, and milk the cows. You, none of y'all did that. But whatever it is you are doing, in your life, in your career, in your business, in your finances. God says, in all of that, I want you to be so, so, blessed is the fruit of your body. Blessed are your children. Blessed is your ground, your cattle, your increase, your sheep. Aha! Blessed are thy basket and thy store. We ended there last week. He wants to fill your basket. See, see the picture. See the word picture. He wants your basket. You ever, you ever come? So, there's a difference between going to the grocery and coming back with a few things in the bag, and coming back with a bag loaded down with stuff. Some of us have had both experiences. Well, you've come, you went to the grocery store, and you had to be very careful everything you got because you didn't have enough. 
So you had your list, and you went down your list, and, and you saw stuff that you would like, but no, no, it's not on the list, because I can't. Because the worst feeling in the world is going to the checkout. Some of y'all know nothing about that. And those of you that do, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but some of us know what it's like to think you had enough. And you come to the checkout, and everybody behind you waiting, and when the, the, the ch -ch -ch and when they give you the, and, 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 and your heart starts beating as you see the number starts to rise. Because you know what is in your pocket. And you see, wait a minute, it's already at the number I have, and I've got 10 items Hey, hey, act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Act like you have no idea. How, Bishop, what, what do you mean by that? I don't understand. I've never, I've never had that experience. No, 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 but some of us, now, now you're here. The people watch it. The people watch it. And, 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 you, and you, you feel that feeling inside of you because like, oh, my God. <laughs> and, it's, and, and there's nothing worse than having to say, well, okay, I'm going to uh, put th th that and everybody online behind you know what that means. So, so, so you, you, you went and you came back with stuff, but your basket wasn't full. But when God changes your season, some of y'all know what I'm talking about now, you, you can walk into the grocery store, and even though I know we're going through some inflation because you are blessed. Because your baskets are blessed and your store is blessed, you can walk in in confidence and say, add it all up. Add, add it all up. As a matter of fact, add it all up. You know what? I'm going to pay for your stuff too. Because God has... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Woo! I hear you, Lord. I want to challenge some of you this week. When you go to the grocery store, pay for somebody else's stuff. Be a blessing to... Some you see, I'm getting ahead of yourself. Because you remember when you were online and you didn't have enough. Or you remember when you were online and you had just enough. But now look at how God has blessed you. You can stand up and they can add up and the number can go up and your heart don't palpitate and your throat don't get dry because God, do I have anybody in here who will give God a praise for the change in your life? You remember when it was that way, but look what the Lord has done. Somebody shout, I'm blessed! This shall be that basket. I can walk out the, 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 the grocery store with bags full of stuff, heavy in my hand, because God has changed my season. I said, God has changed my status. I said, God has changed my situation. I ain't got to worry about it no more because the blessing of the Lord is activated in my life. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Okay, move. Notice, 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 not only not blessed in the basket. See, the basket has to do with the immediate. I'm blessed in my basket and in my store. The store means what's at home. The stores has to see, see, the, the scripture, it's, it's, it's poetic. It, it, it's a balance. It's saying not only do I, what I can carry in my hand, but God has blessed my storehouse. God has blessed my storehouse. So when I go in and I pull open the cupboards, I've got all these spices and I've got all these different kinds of juices and I've got all these different kinds of, of, of crackers and I've got all these different... I open up the refrigerator and it's full. Somebody ought to give God a fridge praise. You ought to give God a praise because of your fridge and because of your closet and because of your cupboards because God has blessed you. You ain't got to worry about a meal because God has blessed you. You ain't got to worry because your store has been blessed. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. And we ended there last week. I didn't mean to end there last week. Where I meant to end last week was verse 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shall thou be. Wait, oh, wait a minute. God, God says, I want to bless you so much that wherever you go, I want you to take the blessing with you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who am I preaching to? I want you to understand that God wants to bless you to the point that wherever you be, that be the blessing. That the blessing is going to be where you are. Because he said, listen, listen. He says, blessed shall thou be when you come in. When you come into your house, you're going to come in and bless it. And blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. When you go out of your house, you're going in blessing. Is there anybody here that want to be blessed when you come in 
and when you go out. In other words, in other words, God says, the blessing I have for you is so copious. It's not limited to one place. It's not limited to one area. It's going to be with you whithersoever thou goest. See, that's why I, I, I praise the Lord the way I do. Because when I think of his blessing and how he blesses me when I'm here and blesses me when I'm there, blesses me when I'm in and blesses me when I'm out, when I think of the blessing of the Lord, it causes me to worship him because I want to live and walk and abide in the blessing. I need somebody who want to live or walk or abide in the blessing of God. Give God a praise right now. Hey, hey. There have been times I didn't feel blessed. And now that I am blessed, can I tell you something? Being blessed is better. Pearl Betty had a famous saying. She said one time, she said, I've been poor and I've been rich. Rich is better. Whether well, there have been times I've not been felt blessed or times I didn't walk in the blessing. But can I tell you something? Being blessed is better. As a matter of fact, I'm better than blessed. Oh, I'm better than blessed. And because God has blessed me, I am walking in the blessing Hold on, hold on. I, 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 can, 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 I, can, can I just read? Can I just read one more verse to you? Verse seven says, "She's still talking about the blessing." It says, "The Lord shall cause." Look, look at it. Look at it. See, look at it. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. L listen to what this says. It says, "You can be blessed and still have." I love the word of God. I was, I was, I was, I was somewhere recently with Pastor Manning. We were talking, and 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 it was a service someplace, and 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 the scriptures were being read. And I leaned over to her and I said, "I just love the word of God. I love. I know I do. I love the word of God. I love it because God's word is balanced. God's word is sensible. Notice He's talking about how blessed you are. You blessed in the city." You're blessed in the field. The field of your body is blessed. Your, 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 your cattle are blessed. Your stuff, you're blessed when you go out. You're blessed when you eat. All of, and yet he says, even when you're blessed, you have some. See, because the devil will tell you when you're blessed, you, you, you ain't nothing going wrong in your life. No, I can be going through hell, but I'm still because he says you're going to have enemies. Not only are you going to have enemies, they're going to come against you. You can be under attack. Lord, I hear you. I want to speak to some people, whether you're here or whether you're watching, who are under attack. Now, don't, don't move. Don't move. Stay, stay totally still so nobody knows it's you I'm talking to. Stay, stay, stay totally still. But, but you are under attack. There's, there's an attack going on in your mind, attack going on in your body, maybe in your finances. And, and, and you're wondering, my God, why is Bishop saying I'm blessed when I'm under attack? Because even when I am under attack, I still have to know that I am blessed. I'm walking in the blessing of God. I'm under attack. Yes, I've got some enemies. Yes, everything is not the way I want it to be. Yes, but I understand that even when I'm under attack by people that hate me, even when the devil has set the, 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 his, his, his hounds against me, even when all hell is breaking loose in my life, I am still walking in. I need somebody who's defiant to jump to your feet and say, I'm still walking in the blessing of God. Yes, I'm under attack, but I am still walking in the blessing of God. Now give God a praise right there. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. All through this chapter, he said, I'm, how blessed you are. You're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Yeah, but you got some enemies. And these aren't silent enemies. How do you know that? Because they rise up against you. There's some people who hate you because you're blessed. There's some people who don't like you because, they, hey, they can't argue that the blessing is on you. Because you could not have gotten as far as you've gotten 
if the blessing was not on you. They, they can't argue it's there, but they hate the fact that you're blessed, so they attack you. Look at what the Bible, look at verse 7. You, if this is your Bible, underline it, highlight it. It says, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten. Look, before thy, you're going to see it. Some of the hell you're going through, you're wondering why it hasn't happened yet, because God wants you to see what he's about to stand still and see the salvation. I decree prophetically that this is a week you're going to see God move in your life. My God, I don't know who this is for. I decree prophetically that this is the week God's allowing you to see things that you never thought you would see. I decree prophetically that God's getting ready to move in your situation and you're going to see it's going to be in your face. You will not be able to deny that this is the doings of the Lord and this mom. Is there anybody here that needs to see some things this week. Anybody watching who needs to see the hand of God move in a mighty way? Anybody watching who needs to see the hand of God turn your situation around? Hear ye the word of the Lord. I have released it so you can see it. I said I've released it so you can see it. I want you to see it so you can experience it. I want you to see it so you can know it. I want you to see it so that no matter what comes your way, you know I'm walking in the blessing of God. Somebody say, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. it gets better than that. Hold up. Look, look, look at it. The rest of the verse. He says, he says, I'm going to cause them to be smitten before your face. But then, then God says, okay, let me just show off for you. He says, they shall come out against thee one way. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. They're going to come out against you one way. But when I'm through whipping them, when I'm through fighting for you, they're going to flee before you seven ways. Get the picture. Get the picture. They come up against you and they think they're bad. But when God gets through doing it, he don't cause them to run back the way. He breaks it up so that they're going all kinds. He's going to splinter every attack. He's going to splinter every problem. He's going to give you the victory. Look, notice, notice. Now, you see, and see, see, when you understand typology, you understand what's being said here. They're coming against you one way, but they're fleeing against you not three ways, not four ways, not five ways, not six ways, seven ways. Seven is the biblical number for completion. Or complete victory. So, so, the, so what, 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 what God is saying is, when I give you the victory, it's not going to be a half victory. It's not going to be a part-time victory. When I give you the victory, it's going to be a complete victory. Seven ways, seven ways. In other words, they're going to run so fast and run so far, they won't know what hit them. I want to tell some people who are facing some issues, some people at your job that don't like you, tell them, y'all better watch it, because this is the week where I received the word from the Lord that my enemies that come against me one way are going to flee seven ways. I'm talking about complete deliverance. Is there anybody in here or anybody watching who ready for complete deliverance, uh, for complete victory, for a breakthrough that's so amazing that you can't doubt that it comes from the Lord. I need somebody who needs a complete victory. They're coming at you one way, but baby, watch out, watch out, because when God gets through with you, uh, you're going to be fleeing seven ways. Complete, uh, total annihilation. The vi somebody shout, victory is mine. Uh, Oh, y'all ain't shouting, shout, victory is mine. I got to deal with some enemies, but victory is mine. I'm dealing with some issues, but victory is mine. I'm dealing with some problems, but victory is mine. If that's your confession, throw up your hands, open your mouth, and give God a shout. Seven ways, seven ways, seven ways. There's going to be no doubt. There's going to be no doubt that God has made room for me. There's going to be no doubt that God 
has brought me out. There's going to be no doubt that God did it. And when God does it, it's done well. Somebody throw up your hands, open your mouth, and thank God for complete victory. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It's breaking through in this place. Where are you that are in need of victory? Who is it that needs God to fight your battle and give you not partial but complete victory? Give him a praise. Give him a praise. talking to me. He's talking to me. Tell somebody, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. Yeah! You're facing an enemy? You're facing some problems? Somebody here, you're fighting the city. You're fighting the city. You're fighting the city. What's going on in your business or in your house? And you need victory. God sent this word to tell you, no matter how they come against you, when I'm through with them, they're going to flee seven ways. Oh, this is your word. Some of you watching, this is your word. So not only am I blessed in the city and in the field, Bless when I go out, when I come in. Blessed my basket, blessed my stores. But when the enemy comes, God's going to do something. Notice, I ain't got to do it. Stand still and see. I said, stand still and see. I said, stand still. But while you're standing, stand with your hands lifted up. Stand with a mouth full of praise. Open up your mouth and praise it while you're standing still. Don't stand still with your hands crossed as if you're resigned. Don't stand still in defiance. Don't stand, no, no, no. Stand still with your hands lifted up. Some of y'all are battling systems. Systems that are against you. Systems that have been put together to stop you. And you say, Bishop, you talk about how I'm blessed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because even though you have enemies, God is still with you. And I've taught you before, one of the reasons you have to have a good preacher, a good pastor, is because God speaks to you through his mouth. And the word announces the change. And I have come to decree over you that the things that are attacking you and coming at you God's about to cause them to flee from you. Seven, wait, they're going to leave you alone and leave you alone for a long time. Hey, who shot that up? Because after this battle is won, you're going to have peace on every side. Wait a minute. I don't know who that's for. I said after this battle is won. Don't quit in the middle of this battle. Don't run. No, no, no. Because after this battle is done, you're going to have peace on every side. Somebody say that. Peace on every side. 
Somebody say that peace on every side. I'm going to have peace on every side. I'm going to have peace on every, 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 every side. Remain standing, I'm finished, but I got to say one more point as I close today. I'm not even finished. I still got, come on back. I got, I got, I'm not done. I'm going to finish this series. Thank God I get to come back. Praise the Lord. I get to come back. I get to come back because there's so much in here by being blessed. But I do want you to pay attention to this one thing. Remain standing. I'm just going to read this verse one of this 28th chapter because there is a key for how you're going to be blessed. You, you want to walk in the blessing of the Lord? There's, it don't just happen. Verse 1 says, and it shall come to pass that if thou hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. So yes, the blessing is there for you. Yes, God wants to be blessed when you go out and when you come in. Blessing you're lying down and you're rising up. He wants to bless the fruit of your body and the fruit of your your cattle and your kind. Yeah, he won't do all that. But the key is, somebody say the key. Somebody say the key. All these blessings, verse 2, shall, no, I, love, I love the scripture, shall come on you and overtake you. you know, I don't know if, if, you, if you've ever been chased by a dog. When I was about seven years old, I, I was walking and this dog, and, and ain't nothing like when you're running and something's coming after you that's faster than you. That's the idea you want you to get in your mind. That God is going to sick blessings. Oh. Do you hear what the Bible said? He says, I got blessings that are going to come on you. And even better than that, they're going to overtake. You can't outrun God's blessing in your life. I said you cannot outrun God's blessings in your life. But in order for you to activate the blessing, all these things shall come on thee and overtake thee if. So I say if. There are, there are many promises in the Bible. Some promises are unconditional. God's going to do what he's going to do, no matter what you do. But when it comes to the blessing, the, ble the, the covenant and the promise of blessing is conditional. Hey, you can have all of it. You can have, God has so much, he can give you ten times over and you still have more to get. But, but, but the key is, If, if it means you have options, you have options. You, who are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to God? Or are you going to listen to your favorite rapper? Are, are, are you going to listen to God? Or your favorite philosopher? Are, are you going to listen to God? Or your favorite talk show host? Are, see, because if means it's there for you, but it is dependent on your choices. And after you've shouted... And after you've rejoiced, and after you've offered him praise, if, it's right there. The blessings are there for you. They're going to come on you, and they will even overtake you. If, you shall hearken, if you're going to listen, if you're going to listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. Lift your hands in this place. Those of you online, lift your hands right where you are. Father, I release a spirit of obedience upon your people. I release a spirit of obedience that we can listen to you. 
we will not fight you. Our, 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 our sinful minds and our humanistic ways want to do it our way, but Lord, we are going to listen to you. We're going to do what you say when we like it and do what you say when we don't like it. Because we understand the key to the blessing is not how good looking we are, it's not the family from which we come, it's not how much money we have in the bank or our IQ level. The key, the key to the blessing are we going to hearken to you. We covenant today, all of us in this room and all of us watching online, that we're going to listen to you. Your ways are not our ways. Your thoughts are not our thoughts, but if you will order our steps, we will follow because we want to be walking in the blessing of God. Put your hands together. Give God the praise.